Hi everybody. I have two big challenges in super macro underwater photography. One is I need to precisely focus on my subject due to the extremely limited depth of field. And for this, my subject and camera have to be motionless. And two, I have to get really close to my subject. Now, keeping these two challenges in mind, in this video, I'm going to give four important tips on how to select a suitable subject for super macro underwater photography. Let's check it out. Let's get to tip number one, select a suitable dive site. I like shallow dives with minimal surge and current. Why not too deep? Because we need lots of time for super macro underwater photography. We need time to approach our subject and precisely focus on our subject. At depth, we have limited time and we also have to spend some of that time more carefully monitoring our air supply, navigation, dive buddy, etc. We really don't have enough time for super macro underwater photography at depth. I also find it impossible to be still enough for super macro photography in high currents, such as on this dive. In addition, drift dives do not enough, allow enough time to approach and precisely focus on our subject. If we do this, we're going to miss the rest of the game. And finally, in heavy surge, I can't hold my camera still enough for the precise focus. On top of that, the subject is often moving a little bit with the surge too. This is a pretty picture of feather dusters on a coral head in the Florida Keys at about 25%, uh, 25 feet depth. Unfortunately, there was heavy surge and there was no way I could get a super macro shot of these beautiful feather dusters just because of constant camera motion, motion from the surge. Same idea with this eel. This is the same dive, nice little eel, but with all the heavy surge, my camera would not hold still enough for super macro. One good thing about uh, dive site location and super macro photography is that good visibility is really not necessary. With super macro, the water column is really small and the depth of field is extremely small. So loss of contrast from the water column and marked backscatter are usually not much of a problem. Here's a picture of me taking a super macro shot of a burfish eye with pretty poor visibility and a lot of stirred up sediment. But you can see that the eye in this image, it came out, it's vibrant and has minimal backscatter. There was a little bit, but I could easily remove it. So we talked about the importance of dive site selections and preferred dive conditions. Now let's talk about subject selection. Tip two, select a subject that might tolerate a close approach. If there is no chance that the subject will allow you to get extremely close, don't even bother trying to get a super macro shot. Now experience will teach you what subjects might and which ones might not ever allow a close approach. For instance, I love parrotfish, but they have never allowed me to approach closely enough to get a super macro shot, and I've given up trying years ago. This is usually about as close as I can ever get. The exception is when they are sleeping at night, but in that setting I'm somewhat afraid of disturbing them and suddenly awake them from their cocoons. Similarly, butterfly fish are beautiful and I have gotten some decent images. Here's a nice portrait, but they have not allowed me to get close enough for super macro. On the other hand, I have gotten lucky with French angelfish and gray angelfish. I was very patient with this guy and got a nice super macro shot of its beautiful eye. So tip two is select a subject that can tolerate a close approach. Tip three, you also must select a subject that at least at times has the ability to be motionless. I found this juvenile drumfish and it, sometimes they allow a close, appro close approach but they are never motionless long enough for a good super macro shot. Other fishes are still enough at times. For instance, I was very patient and I was, uh, this porcupine fish allowed a very close approach and it even held still for a while and I got a beautiful super macro shot of its gorgeous eye. You'll learn from experience what subjects might and might not tolerate a close enough approach to allow for uh, and be still enough to allow for uh, precise focusing. And finally, the final tip, select a subject location where there will be no damage to the reef as you approach it and no obstructions. 
Now this flounder was on a ledge with nothing in front of it, making the background completely non-distracting and making it easy to get close without damaging the surrounding coral. And I was able to get a beautiful super macro shot of its eye. On the other hand, this seahorse was surrounded by coral on all sides except its backside. I could not get close enough for a decent super macro shot without damaging some of the surrounding coral. I didn't even bother trying, even though it was a beautiful seahorse. Sometimes there is also obstructions for your strobe. I could get my camera close to this yellow line arrow crab, but unfortunately could not pull the large strobe in tightly enough. It was obstructed by the ledge above. Now this trunk fish held quite still and allowed a close approach. However, in open water, it's almost impossible for me to hold my camera still enough for a super macro shot to focus, no matter how good my buoyancy is. Now my dive buddy in Indonesia, he used, used a stick to stabilize him with one hand and go for open water super macro shots. He's able to hold his camera still with one arm and depress the shutter with the same hand and arm. I have to admit, I have a lot of difficulty doing this. Well, I hope you found these four tips helpful. One, select a dive site which is shallow with no surge or current. Two, select a subject that might tolerate a close approach. Three, select a subject that at least at times has the ability to be motionless. And four, select a subject location where you can approach it without damaging the reef and there are no obstructions to your strobe. Thanks a lot for tuning in.